So I have to clear up something. Mm -hmm. You know how I always tell the story that my mom would play 40 bingo cards? With a cigarette. With a cigarette and a dauber, and then yeah. I was a baby on the yeah. bassinet. I guess she didn't smoke until my dad started driving her crazy. So which she was? wasn't smoking at the bingo hall. Did she correct you last she night? She did. We were at bingo, which, by the way, <laughs> I won at the Chesterbird. Hi, everybody. So I took the dart, but she wanted me to clear it up. America, my mom didn't smoke when I was a baby. Years later, when I was a teenager and she didn't care, yes. Bjorn, why don't you say roll the open today? Roll the open. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Bjorn. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Jason Show. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Let us start with this. <laughs> Vir virtual reality uh, headsets are popping up uh, everywhere these days. Apple has a new one. It's like $4 million. But one mom is learning the hard way. Now, before I read anything else, please, as I say, come back to the TV, put down the laundry, forget about the kids for a minute. You got there, they're fine, they're malleable, they'll be fine. One mom um, needs to be a little more aware of her surroundings while wearing one of these dumb things. Look. <laughs> what was that? Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> Boom. Right there. The first time the mom tried it out, she ends up smashing the glass on her oven right there. Now, feel free to giggle. She's okay. She's okay. She was okay with releasing this too, or believe me, we would already be in court. Uh, her embarrassing moment has millions of views online already. Poor mom. Let's get started. Leo, roll it. Here we go. great after watching that. I, gosh, like my bones hurt from that. Have you, have you ever done one of those? Oh, I did one with you, remember? I couldn't even like move my head. I got so sick. Yeah, we did. We we went to, what was it called, Jeff? It was the uh, VR. Um, something. It's one that the I Will Smith. I up for this. What? Sandbox. sandbox. Extreme, yes, a sandbox. <laughs> you think it, no. And um, Kendall set this shoot up. We yep. get there, mm -hmm. we get into the full gear, which takes like 20 minutes. It does. And we're finally in it, and Kendall goes like this, oh, I don't feel good. Okay. And I was like, okay. what? Let's be clear. I put it on, and everything is starting, and Jason's like, are you ready to go? And he's fine. And I'm like, oh, my God, I think I'm going to vomit. Like, the sweat started going you were down so, my I back. I did feel bad for you. And I was like, I can't, I'm so sorry. And you can't take them off because you've got things on your hands. I know. But anything for the show, though, Kendall. That anything so for the show, fun. yeah. Anything for the show. So yeah. fun. Hey, uh, I've been telling you about this for a while. If you want to celebrate your birthday with us and get a limited edition pen Ooh. and birthday sash, Ooh. we're starting it. The birthday club. You can sign up at eventbrite.com. And uh, and today we have. Are you ready? Our first. Two official members, Marianne and Chris, everybody. There they are. Now, they are, uh, 
when we came up, Leo, and stay stay on that shot. When we came up with this, uh, people were like, oh, Jason, because uh, the sashes were our idea. Oh, Jason, the, the people are not going to want to wear those sashes. And I say, I said, well, if they don't wear them, they're going to get kicked out. So, I mean, so, they, yeah, they're, man, they're, they're mandatory birthday sashes, and they're beautiful. There we go. Happy birthday, you two. Well... As I said, sign up at eventbrite.com and thanks to our partners at Grand Casino, you're also going to get not only that lovely sash and the pin, the limited edition pin, you're going to get up to $20 in Grand Play to use at Grand Casino. And now, now here's the deal. Thank you. The, and by the way, there's no obligation to take me with you. I, if you don't want, I, but I am a good luck charm. I am. Yeah. If you can, I am. Do you want to take me to Grand Casino? Now, look, if you can't be here on your exact birthday, don't worry. We got you covered. You're, we're going to give you a few days before and a few days after to come. But uh, Kendall and I can't. Uh, don't, like, if your birthday's today, mm -hmm. don't come in May and go, oh, my birthday was a few days ago. <laughs> you, you went and, oh, I'm sorry. I was just in Europe for a few weeks. Yeah, we we're not going to. No, then we're going to say, uh, go to Twin Cities Live or something. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll, they'll tell you, just go over there. They'll give you a balloon. Um, <laughs> It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> well, it is, uh, I couldn't wait for today's show because I watched this yesterday and I was like, I can't wait to tell you about it. It's a moment in music history anyone alive in the 80s remembers. The new Netflix documentary, The Greatest Night in Pop, documents the recording of the legendary song, We Are the World, in 1985. This documentary features, inter features interviews and, uh, with the artists involved and shares never-before-seen video from the actual night of the recording, which took place after the 1985 American Music Awards. As I said a few minutes ago, I skipped a nap yesterday and I watched it before bingo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lionel, uh, Lionel Richie wrote the song. Let's start with this. There's so many things I want to tell you. I don't want to give everything away because I want you to enjoy it, but we picked out a few tidbits. First, if you didn't know, Lionel wrote the song with Michael Jackson and shared, <laughs> shared this great story about what it was like creating the song at Michael's house. Watch. Out of the corner of my eye, I see some albums falling over, and I hear <sighs> what the heck? What the hell is that? What the, what? I look over my shoulder. <clears throat> That's the biggest freaking snake. And Michael's going, there he is, Lionel. Oh my God, he lost the snake in the room. He came out when he heard us singing, Lionel, and he wanted to meet you. He wants to say hello to you. <laughs> I gotta get out of here quick. The snake just wants to meet you, Lionel. Uh, no. <laughs> Lionel said, yeah. No, can you imagine? Oh. And then earlier the documentary talks about a, a, a moment with the monkey, mm -hmm. uh, with oh, Bubbles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine trying to write a song under deadline? You have a monkey, you have a snake. Anyway, Lionel, as Michael called him, said Michael came up with the title and many of the hooks in the song. And one of the things that you learn is, look, uh, not downplaying, not forgetting mm -hmm. uh, all that Michael's legacy is full of, but let's separate that for a second and say what this reminds you of is what people in my generation knew very well, and which is he was a musical genius. Again, let's put everything else on the shelf for just a second. Because Michael didn't know how to play instruments, he just hummed everything. And you hear these audio tapes of Michael humming the melody. The recording lasted all night long, no pun intended, uh, until the early morning. One funny moment happened during a break when Diane, you're looking at it right now, when Diana Ross uh, asked Daryl Hall from Hall of Notes for an autograph. Once she did that, that led to all the stars getting autographs from each other on their sheet music. Yeah, well, isn't that great? I mean, look, there's Willie. I mean, it's just hysterical. Cindy getting it from Lionel. Yeah, one of the most fascinating moments involves Prince. And his close friend at the time, and friend of our show, Sheila E. Hi, Sheila. Prince said that he would be part of the song, 
okay? But he wasn't there yet, and they were recording. Watch this. I'm now on the phone with Prince. He's at Carlos and Charlie's. He said, I, 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 want, I want to play a guitar solo in another room. I said, no, 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 it's, we're all in the same room. I need you to come and sing. It was getting late, and I was looking forward to singing one of the verses. But they kept asking, well, do you think you can get Prince here? I'm like, wow, this is weird. And I just started feeling like, I feel like I'm being used to be here because they want Prince to show up. And the longer they keep me, maybe Prince will show up. I already knew he wasn't going to come because there's too many people, and he would feel uncomfortable. I told Lionel, I said, I'm going to go. They never intended on having me sing a verse, which was a little bit heartbreaking. Yeah. And again, youngins, Sheila E. had a mega, mega hit at the time. She was huge. Well, to us, she is still huge. Without Prince, producers had to find someone else to sing his part. Because, uh, again, this was happening like at 1.30 in the morning. Everything was, they had to move with whatever happened. Here's what happened next, thanks to Kenny Loggins. Michael came to me and said, Prince isn't coming, so we have a, a spot on the line that needs a soloist. Who do you recommend? And I said, Huey Lewis. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, Quincy wants you. So he brought me to Quincy. He says, Smelly, come over here. Get Michael. And he said, sing the line for Huey. There's no way we can fall. But just it's believe. It's no it's way we can fall. Hello. Hello. So now I get Prince's line. I mean, those are pretty big shoes to fill. Uh, very big shoes to fill. Yeah, they alluded to... Sheila said that uh, Prince wouldn't have liked it anyway because there were too many people there, basically. Uh, and he was, wasn't his thing. And plus, there was a uh, kind of unspoken about rivalry between Prince and Michael Jackson at the time. So, makes yeah, sense. makes sense. The Greatest Night in Pop is available to stream now on Netflix. Lots more to come. We'll be right back. Back after this. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. More dish for you. Samuel L. Jackson joined Jimmy Kimmel on his show last night, and Jimmy helped Samuel celebrate the anniversary of one of his most iconic roles. Watch. You know, the uh, 30th anniversary of Pulp Fiction is, uh, is coming up. There you are. Is there an event plan? Is there a, uh, anything that's going to happen? No. No. Okay, I was worried that there wasn't going to be anything, so we have something special for you. Little... And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. It's just the coolest. He's just one of the coolest. Jimmy surprised Samuel by telling him that he's now been in more than 200 movies. Yeah, his latest Argyle opens uh, this week. He's still I, 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 one of the... George Lucas, I, I'm a Star Wars fan, one of his biggest mistakes was, uh, spoiler alert for a 20-year-old movie, but was killing off Mace Windu. Uh, I wish Samuel L. Jackson's character would be spun off. He was, I mean, come on. He was the only Jedi at the time that had a purple lightsaber. Come on! Come on! Samuel, and George let, did you know this? No. George Lucas let Samuel L. Jackson pick the color of his lightsaber. Because he's Samuel L. Jackson. Because he's Samuel L. Jackson. You just do whatever he wants. Okay. Sticking with Late Night, my friends, next to the dish, a stunning, I mean, wait till you see her. Demi Moore was a guest on The Late Show. She's out promoting uh, the new uh, show Feud, uh, Capote's versus the Swan, Capote versus the Swan. Kendall and I are going to watch it tonight, but she's also talking about an upcoming documentary, looking back at her days in the Brat Pack. Look. What do you think of when you look back at those years, when you guys were first starting out, kind of lumped together as a, as a, as a unit? I mean, you know, at that time, there weren't really... It, it was very new to be doing stories about young people. Mm -hmm. So it was... Um, 
I don't think any of us really loved the moniker of being called brats um, because it kind of diminished, you know, our sense of being professionals, um, sure. which is what the documentary is about. This documentary is an exploration of what and how that affected each of us. Like Rob, it just rolled off his back. For me, I didn't... Most things seem to roll off his He's back. He's good that way. Yes. He is good that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for Andrew, it really affected him in things and choices he made. So... Yeah. Fellow Brat Packer Andrew McCarthy is actually making the movie. I said to the audience when that was rolling, look at her. I know. It's so unfair. I mean, to have that hair. She's had that hair for so long. Give it to someone else. <laughs> like, hand it off. It's not fair. She just looks, uh, you can say, she looks better now than she did in some sections of the 90s. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, she's stunning. Beautiful. Well, every week we get the inside scoop on life in Hollywood from one person. Join me live from L.A. is the host of the uber-popular Hollywood Raw podcast, the uber-popular Dax Holt. Hello. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, audience. Hello, hello. Hi, buddy. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Who did you talk to this week? We actually had a paparazzi on this week, and it was a super fascinating conversation with Jeremiah, who uh, we have known for many, many years uh, from working at TMZ. But uh, he now has a really fun gig going on. So obviously we talked about all about his years of being a cameraman in the streets of Hollywood, the run-ins that he's had with Bravo stars and big celebrities and athletes and all kinds of stuff. Um, but he's actually changed his gig a little bit. He is now giving people a front row seat of what it's like to be a paparazzi. And he will take people out. He does this like Airbnb experience where he takes you out in the field with him. It's called Pop, Pop Safari. And he'll take you out, show you the different restaurants, go to Craig's, you see the Pap Crush, because there's basically a celebrity there every night. And he'll immerse you into what it's like. And then on the flip side, he will give you, if you want to see what it's like to be a celebrity, he will give you that experience and he will follow you around Hollywood and have the flash bulbs go off and show you what it's like to be a celeb. Wow. It's really cool, right? Well, it is awesome. Dax, I was wondering, and I wondered if you covered this, I'm sure you did because you're, you're a broadcaster, but, <laughs> but in this age where we are all kind of paparazzos, I mean, all of us, mm -hmm. we all have a camera, we can all take pictures and post on an Instagram, have the economics of being a paparazzo, have they changed art? Is their work as valuable as it was like when you were at TMZ? No, it's diminished a whole lot. And he, we, he actually got into that. We talked to him about just the price of photos throughout the years. You know, back in the day, you could get hundreds of dollars for a photo of a celeb. And he goes, the other day, I got $3 for a photo. He goes, it was actually Larsa Pippen that he got her coming out. And Larsa is, a, I would say, a pretty big deal. She's, on, she's a housewife. You know, she's always in the news. She's dating Michael Jordan's son. Like, she's always got some kind of controversy so, surrounding her. So her, her photos should go for more money, more money. But he actually posted on our private Facebook page, off the record, a screen grab of his pay, like how much money he made off of these photos from the, the paparazzi website that sells them for him and just shows you, look, I made $3 on this photo. <laughs> when I, in the past, I would have made hundreds and hundreds of dollars. A local photographer caught Kendall and I to Panera and got about 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. making money, it's value right there. <laughs> <laughs> we we did buy the we for we, Kendall and I did buy the guys lunch. We just want to be clear. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Dax. Have a good week, my friend. Thank you. The latest episode of the Hollywood Raw podcast is is available now. Remember that when we were yeah. like, there's someone taking pictures of us. It's us. <laughs> it, it was photographer Eric, actually. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It was he shoot. works for us. We yeah. Forgot. Up next, more dish. I told you how much I'm enjoying. Okay. <laughs> There's so many aspects to this. I really am, I'm not enjoying, I am loving. I told Dar, I told my mom about it last night at Bingo, the new Netflix drama, Griselda. It's so good. Sofia Vergara, if you don't know, plays real life drug lord known as the godfather, a uh, godmother of cocaine. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> 
Netflix in France may have taken things a, a little too far when promoting this show. Audience, look at this. A truck drucket decorated with the title of the show was spotted in Paris driving down a street with a giant straw on the top of the truck sucking up piles of white powder. The entire audience is now getting it. Yeah. It's supposed to be cocaine. Okay, not surprisingly, this stunt. <laughs> Can we just watch this over and over again? Uh, surprisingly, it led to, oh, I don't know, a little controversy, and the video was removed from Netflix's social media. Come on, though. I want to be in that meeting. <laughs> I want to be in that marketing meeting mm -hmm. where somebody goes, I have a giant idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's get a giant straw mm -hmm. yep. and suck up fake cocaine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Little Jean Pierre's on the street, like, Mommy, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 By the way, again, I'm still loving the show. I'll say it again. Uh, even if you're not, I'm not. I am not a drug lord genre kind of guy. <laughs> um, and I'm not a drug lord. I'm also, but yeah. Thank you for clarifying. But this isn't, um, this isn't a show I would typically like. I cannot wait to finish it. There are six episodes. Trust me, you're going to love it. I mean, it is violent. Let me tell you that. It's very violent. But... I still recommended it to my mother. I mean, if that tells you anything. Not a lot. Dar's a actually. big girl. She can handle it. Yeah. Doesn't tell me much. No. Yeah, I know. Dar, Dar, I'm gonna get a text. I know I am. Uh, you can watch Griselda right now on Netflix. More dish for you now. She's considered one of the greatest reality TV players in history. But one day, after she was sitting on our couch, Big Brother legend Janelle. Uh, says that she may be done with the genre for good. Janelle, as I told you yesterday, appears in season two of another show I'm obsessed with, The Traitors on Peacock. She's best known as a four-time player on CBS's The uh, Big Brother. Well, in an interview with EW.com, Janelle says she's definitely done with Big Brother and she might just be over uh, reality TV in general. Now, look... She didn't say she was retiring. She's just going to be very selective. So, like Cher. You know what I mean? Like Cher, she keeps retiring, and then she comes back. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then she has a Christmas album, and it's fine. She's back. But, no, come on, Janelle. Why couldn't you break that news here on our show? Come on. I mean, to be able to make a living off of doing stuff that, that is that fun and entertaining, uh, too. Right? Not a lot of people can. No. Know? That's Crazy. But she's so good. She's really good. And she does have a whole other career. She's a, a realtor. Really? Yeah, she's a realtor, too. All she, right, just that. She just has two jobs. Yeah. How so, many do you have now? But how many jobs do I have? Yeah, three. Uh, three. Four, I knocked one out a couple years ago, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, done. I'm down to three. And a half. Yeah. <laughs> I've washed Jeff's car on occasion, yeah. so I do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we have such a good show. Leslie Miller and more. So go get some more coffee, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Fresh off her trip to New Zealand, the wine diva Leslie Miller is back. And coming up, she's going to give you her list of the best wines down under. And then, if you saw Meredith Vieira yesterday on our show, you know that she spilled the tea on her friend Melissa Peterman. Well, and our friend, too. Well, wow. we'll call this Melissa Peterman. Hurtful. Strikes back. I'm going to spill some of your secrets, okay? That and more when the Jason Show continues. It's so sad that Kendall can't take part in these wine segments. What? I'm just joking. For the roughly for roughly the past month, our next guest has been sipping, hiking, skydiving her way through New Zealand. And now she's back with her favorite wines from Down Under. Please give it up for the one and only our wine diva, Leslie Miller. <laughs> Hello, Leslie. Hello. How you doing? 
so good. Welcome back. Thank you for doing, if you guys missed it, it's on our socials. Thank you for doing the interview with Kendall uh, from New Zealand. That was beautiful. That was awesome. Actually, I was 26 or 27 hours ahead. So I was actually in another day. You were in the future. I was in the future. Yes. Leslie came to us from the future. I did. It was so fun. Okay, can you show us, uh, Director Leo, put up a little elite yield map. Yeah. Where were you? So we covered both islands here. We flew into Auckland, went immediately down to Wellington, and then took a helicopter. Very oh, bougie. God bless yeah. you on Very that bougie. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, over to Marlboro. Um, like we, the cigarettes? Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Marlboro yeah. man was there. Yeah. Um, and then we traveled all of the South Island. This is where we did a glacier hike with another helicopter. Uh, we went to Fjordlands. We went to all these areas that Kendall was. I was thinking of her the whole time because of the Lord of the Rings yeah. everywhere you go. Oh, I know. Um, Kendall loves Lord of the Rings. Yeah. We, we wouldn't get her out of the tour <laughs> if she was there. Yeah. Yeah. And then everywhere there, they say, oh, Peter Jackson owns that, Steven Spielberg owns that, everywhere. They really? own big chunks of land, but what they did is they gave a lot of the land back to the people. That's nice. Which is very cool, yeah. That's, that's right, there yep. it is. Oh, oh no, well, now, now, wait Sorry. a minute. <laughs> no, 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 we went too fast. What the hell was happening in that first picture? Oh, yeah, a lot of different food. Um, the <laughs> oh, what, what? <laughs> No, now sorry. you're skipping past the studio <laughs> audience wants to know were you on a, were you naked in that hot tub or something? I mean I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was just kidding. Uh, uh, maybe I, I You were naked in New Zealand? A few times, yeah. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> Atta girl. I mean, we're almost fifty. I mean, so Listen, That's we're, it. we're almost yeah. there, Jason and I, That's so right. you got to just live it up. Okay. Okay, let's talk about Marlboro, because okay. this is a very important region. This and is I, the region of Marlboro yes. we're starting with. Okay. I'm going to have you start with this little guy on the end. That's okay. a little, that's a different grape, actually, for us. So this is such a fascinating conversation, which I learned so much when I was there. Everybody, when you think of Sauvignon Blanc, you think of New Zealand Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. It produces... Sure, we don't, you do, because you're fancy, but yeah. <laughs> But people, when you say, what do you like? like? Like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. About two thirds of all the wine production in the country actually comes from Marlboro, even though they have six to seven different wine regions there. Oh. And what happened here is that, you know, the Crawfords, Kim and Erica Crawford, they put together Kim Crawford many, many years ago. They sold the company many years ago. But this is really what brought a spotlight to the country on this grape. And so even the tiny, tiny small producers like you're tasting, Jules Taylor, who I'm completely obsessed with. This bottle right here, audience, yeah. right Jules there. Jules Taylor, she's coming to visit us in June, and I want to bring her on the show because you're going to be obsessed with her. Like, well, sure. She, she makes amazing wine, and she's one of these small farmers that actually started making wine with the Crawfords. But this is a tiny. Because y'all know Kim Crawford. If you go to a restaurant, yeah, it's you've everywhere. Heard of Kim Crawford yeah. wine, yeah. So all these big, like Monkey Bay and Cloudy Bay, Oyster Bay, all these things are actually really big, kind of manufactured labels. So we forget about these tiny little farmers, and it is just like a tiny little thumbprint of what's going on. There. Again, because it's one of the things I love about your segments here is. Everyone can find those big brands. Yeah, you always right. focus on small companies that need a little publicity sometimes. Yeah, so I love farmers. that. Yeah, I love yeah. that. So the Jules Taylors of the world, Spy Valley, these guys are amazing. They're actually set up right in the middle of Spy Valley. This is where a majority of the world's satellites sit to listen for spies, which really? is very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Which one is that? Can um, I drink that one? Yep, this guy here on the end. Okay, so stylistically, That's all I'm about. Yeah. this is one thing to be cognizant of. Taste different New Zealand wine. Oh. Right? Very different. That is a marked difference between Spy Valley and Jules. Yeah, Jules, right? This is sparkly. Yeah, it feels like almost Crisp. like ting, tingly, tingly on your tongue. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very crisp and kind of what you think of like New Zealand savvy. Okay. Now you go into the, so the, like the middle of the South Island and you're in this very amazing region called Central Otago. This is where I'm going to move to later. I'm going to move here. This okay, is, well, get these, like a three bedroom. Yeah, so yeah. Where are you, you know, I mean, please. Yeah. So I used to live and work in the Willamette Valley of Oregon, and this to me felt so identical to that. Which um, one is it? So let's start here with this little Pinot Noir. Okay. This
okay. this is what this region in the middle is known for. They're known for Pinot Noir, and these are not big companies. These are really small little farmers. This is Mohua, which comes from the Peregrine family. And then um, this is actually Burn Cottage, who I felt I became very obsessive with these guys. Um, this is actually a Chicago family that went over and bought some property and they're doing everything biodynamically. They're spending so much time and love and energy on Right producing. here, Burn Cottage? Yep, Burn Cottage. I like that label. Yeah, and they're in this really great little region called Bannock Burn, and so you get this like density to your Pinot. Just really awesome if you love something like an Oregon Pinot. Okay, I love that one. This is, I of the red one, I like this one, the Burn Cottage, and I love the they're from Chicago. Hi, Chicago. Yes, yeah. exactly. And the yep. Chicago Love market Chicago. is watching today. That's right. Um, and then we ended up going back up north, and back up north, um, they're just past Wellington. So in the North Island, there's a city on the far southern edge called Wellington, and if you just kind of head east, there's a little tiny region called Martinbra. They say, it, it looks like Martinboro, but, but they say, you say Martinbra. It's like Louisville. You say Louisville, <laughs> you don't go Louisville. No, yeah. this is another Sauvignon Blanc, but it's a little different because it's a little bit crisper, a little softer, I think. Craigie Range, they're actually located just north in the Hawks Bay. Um, they're very famous for Syrah, Cabernet, Merlot. Um, it's this one, my friends, this yep. right there, okay? And then the other very famous winery there is Temata and Temata. 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 They're one of the oldest wineries actually in the country, um, founded in like the mid 1800s. Ooh. This is a little gamay that they make, but they also make Syrah. So there's, a, again, there's so many different grapes in this country. And sadly, we focus on Sauvignon Blanc. Is the country very happy for that? Absolutely. But I am here to tell you that there's so much more. Yeah, and if you yeah. look, if you want to know more, like you're, you were fascinated by this and you're getting ready to have a party and you're like, what was this wine? What was that wine? All you have to do is follow Leslie on social at amusewine.com. Or mm -hmm. if you're here locally or if you're visiting the Twin Cities area, visit Leslie at her shop. It's fabulous. Sip better <laughs> in, in our hood of the North Loop of Minneapolis. Give it up for Leslie, everybody. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Cheers. When we come back, uh, a rebuttal to Meredith Vieira, next. <laughs> Well, yesterday uh, on our show, I had the privilege, delight of chatting with our friend Meredith Vieira, talking about her game show, 25 Words or Less. Well, we're used to her by now, so we can have a little fun with her, have a joke around with her. So at the end of the interview, I asked about our mutual friend, Melissa Peterman, you know, from Reba and Young Sheldon and Fargo, go Bears. And I knew that Meredith, it was like throwing a ball to somebody, and somebody hitting a home run, and I knew Meredith would hit a home run. If you don't remember, here's what she said. We want, I want the bad stuff. I mean, uh, dig up some skeletons. Uh, well, tell me, yeah. Well, she's a drinker, you know that. <laughs> and that's just, it's really problematic. We, we, we basically prop her up. You know the number of takes we do with her? It's, it's, I mean, I love her, but she has issues. She's just got issues. And talk about a hooker, oh my God. You, you, when you're next to her trailer, you can hear it. You can hear the it's, it's inappropriate. I don't, it's, it's not a way to get to the top, but you know what? She's done okay. So you know, maybe she, yeah. that's been her formula for success. Yep. <laughs> I, did we not die laughing? You can hear executive oh producer Jeff God. laughing. I, I just knew. I'm like, Meredith, you're the best. Well, of course. We had to reach out to Melissa for her response, and she wasted no time sending us this reply. Wow, okay, hurtful. Um, okay, Jason, thank you, Jason, for um, offering me up the opportunity to rebuke those words, those disparaging words that Miss Vera spoke about me with you, one of my best friends, on The Jason Show, my favorite show, that airs in my hometown where my family watches. Vera, my parents watch that show. Um, and uh, hurtful and untrue, okay? And I didn't want to have to go there, Vera, but I'm gonna spill some of your secrets, okay? And these are the true, 
the truth ones, okay? Um, let's be clear. The only things that we have to cart away after a day of playing 25 words or less is all the empty Chardonnay bottles from Meredith Vera's dressing room. Yeah, you heard me. I brought those into the recycling center and I made enough money to buy myself a cabin up in Lutzen. Yeah, that's the truth. And the truth is, oh, talking about, um, you know, who might be a, a, a lady of the evening or whatever, whatever you said about me, which I just played a hooker in a movie, Miss Vera, you're the one. You don't even wear pants behind that podium when you're hosting the show. It's a shirt and a blazer, and if we're lucky, maybe a pair of socks, okay? So there, I, I rebuke, and I told the real truth behind the scenes of 25 words or less. So there you have it. Um, I'm sorry you had to, it went there, Jason. I know that you are, um, it's a family show, and I didn't want to have to go there, but Vera forced me. Um, anyway, I love you, Jason. I love you all watching. Um, Kendall, you look gorgeous. And I can't wait to meet the baby. And uh, I've got to run. Um, <laughs> all right. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> all right. And there, for real? Goodbye. Goodbye. There's a, she is the best. Make sure, no matter what your market, you're watching uh, us in Go Watch. Person, place, your thing. That's Meredith's show. And other way. That's that's right. It's Melissa's show. <laughs> Meredith's is 25 words or less. Again, I'm still on pain meds. Time. Yeah, anyway. As we mentioned at the top of the show, today is the first day of the Jason Show Birthday Club. So we thought, we, uh, we thought let's celebrate with a game related to birthdays and we'll play that when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Again, today is the first day of our brand new Jason Show Birthday Club. So we thought, hey, you know what? Let's play a game and let's make it birthday related. It's game time. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. So please welcome today's players. Give it up for Karen, everybody. <laughs> and don't forget Richard. Okay. So this is really simple. Uh, we're going to show you two celebrities on the screens in front of you, and you have to guess who's older. Uh, the minute you know, go ahead and hit the buzzers in front of you. So Karen, Richard, and just all, all you need to know is this is harder than you think it is. I, I <laughs> didn't do well on this quiz this morning. Okay, here we go. First one, Gail or Oprah? Richard. Uh, Oprah. You are right. You are right. <laughs> Oprah. Oprah just turned 70. Gail is 69. Ooh. There we go. Okay, here we go. Elvis actors, Austin Butler or Jacob Elordi? Karen. Austin. You are right. You are right. Austin. Austin is 32. Jacob Elordi is 26. Okay, here we go. Hands above buzzers. Harrison Ford or Morgan Freeman? Ooh. Richard. Harrison Ford. No, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman, 86 to 81. Wow, Morgan Freeman is 86. Okay, anyway, we've got to get used to that. Okay, hands above buzzers. <laughs> mean Girls, Lindsay Lohan or Rachel McAdams? Karen. Lindsay. No, oh. no. Rachel McAdams is 45. Lindsay Lohan is 37. <laughs> Rachel McAdams is 45? What? <laughs> oh, Bjorn, a new producer, Bjorn, just went, look at the card. Mm. <laughs> Fourth day may be his last. Yeah. <laughs> I, are we sure about that, BB? Yeah, she was 26 when she filmed Mean Girls. She was 26 when she filmed Mean Girls. Oh, Good Lord. Okay, here we go. Hands up, buzzers. Carol Burnett or Dame Maggie Smith? <laughs> Karen. Maggie Smith. Dame Maggie. No. Oh, but shocker. look, this is close. Shocker. Carol Burnett is 90. Uh, Maggie Smith is 89. Oh. Yeah. So we're close. Okay, here we go. Hands above buzzers. Tom Cruise or Paul Giamatti? Richard. Tom Cruise? You are right, Richard. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise is 61. Paul Giamatti is 56. See, I know, I know, 61, we are old, Jeff. <laughs> we are very old. Okay, here we go. Hands above buzzers. 
<laughs> Rihanna or Carly Rae Jepsen? Richard. Rihanna. No. No. Carly Rae is 38. Rihanna is 35. 35. Yeah. That was a tough one. Carly was 26 when uh, Call Me Maybe came out. Yeah. And Rihanna was 17. Just 17 with her first hit. Okay, here we go. Funny men are next. Uh, James Corden or Jim Parsons? Karen. James Corden. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim Parsons is 50. <laughs> Sheldon is 50, and then James Corden is 45. There we go. Okay, hands above buzzers. This one I got wrong. That's all I'm going to tell you. Cindy Lauper or Madonna? Richard. Madonna. No. Cindy Lauper is 70. And Madonna is 65. Wow. Again, I know. I'm knocking at death's door here. Okay, here we go. Hands above buzzers. John Travolta or Tom Hanks? Karen. John Travolta. You got one right. You got it. Karen. Uh, Travolta is 69. Hanks is 67. Okay, we have one, uh, a couple more. Okay, here we go. Cher or Dolly Parton? Oh, oh, they're both. Dolly. Well, I think it was actually Richard. It doesn't matter. You <laughs> both are going to win anyway. What did you say? Dolly Parton. You are right. Dolly. That's right. <laughs> Dolly is 78. Cher is 77. Oh, God, that hurts. Hands above buzzers. Lovely, ladies. A, a couple more. Uh, oh, we have one last question. Here we go. Out of the four actresses from the Golden Girls, which one was the oldest? B. Arthur, Betty White, Rue McClan McClanahan, or Estelle Getty? Richard. Estelle? Estelle is wrong. Over to you, Karen. I'm going to say Betty White. You are right. Yeah. Betty White. Uh, Betty was 63, just a few months older than B. Arthur when filming started. B, listen to this. B was just one year older than Estelle Getty, yeah. can, and played, who played her mom. Wow. Give it up for our players today, everybody. We're going home with the season nine Jason Trump Live. There we go. Thank you, sir. And if you catch Leslie before she hits the parking lot, a bottle of wine. There we go. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Patrick, Patrick Mahomes and his Chiefs are getting, that's my imitation, uh, are getting ready for the Super Bowl in 10 days. But the quarterback is making news for a different reason this week. His dad bod. On Sunday, the NFL posted a shirtless video of uh, Patrick uh, celebrating in the locker room. Some people were surprised to see Mahomes rocking what they call a dad bod, thinking the pro athlete would have a six pack. Patrick laughed it off, tweeting, why, uh, why they have to do Oh my God, you trying to read that. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Wh whatever. Uh, hashtag dad bod season. Leave. Okay, look. Leave him alone. He has kids. And I would kill for that body. Are you kidding me? He's an athlete. What? He's an athlete. He's an athlete. That's right. Hi, I'm Patrick. We're gonna we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. I would kill. She says the show is a great way to start her day with a laugh and a smile. We love you, Linda, and appreciate you. She's going to get a Jason Show mug, also enter to win the monthly grand prize. She's going to possibly be a VIP guest in our audience. Uh, she's also going to get a $150 Becker Furniture gift card and a $250 gift certificate to renew Med Spa if she wins. There we go. That's nice. Uh, let's, Kendall, let's make way. Let's oh, hear sorry. it for our birthday club ladies. Love those. See, they like oh. the sash. And they matched. I thought that was really nice of them. <laughs> oh, you yeah. do match. match. So that was. Do polite. you know each other? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I do now. Now I do. Okay. <laughs> I'm taking this one to Margaritas after the show. Right there. Yeah. 
tomorrow, the host of, uh, of Bargain Mansions on HGTV joins us uh, in studio to talk renovations and more. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.